this, but people are yearning for human beings that are real. And what you have right now is a card that most people don't have. Because when you show that one, there's no doubt that you are authentic and real. When someone says, oh, you know, I didn't go to an Ivy League school. I went to this smaller school, but I'm, I'm being real about it. That's cool. But you'll never have a bigger hand than the drug addict that says, I'm a drug addict. You have the freaking Trump card. That's the litmus test of whether or not you're willing to be what everybody isn't articulating, but what everybody is searching for. I think it's a competitive advantage for you. You just need to own the story, not one that you make up, the one you're living fully and not hide from the fact that you're a recovering addict. That's the difference between what I said and what you said. You were almost apologizing for it. You weren't saying this is an asset. And that's because that's what we're taught. We're taught it's a stigma. And the best you can do is neutralize the stigma. And then you live in the cloak of anonymity and you don't share and all that kind of stuff. And so the biggest difference is, is that I'm trying to say, look, this is an asset for me and you. And you can, you can use that uh, if, if I, I don't think, I understand what you're saying about it being competitive. I think you can use that to your advantage. Everybody in this world is looking for a story that they can connect with and everybody is affected by addiction. And so when you share your story, you immediately differentiate yourself from all the other candidates. And if you position that as an asset, not inappropriately, appropriately, authentically, if you actually, cause like, here's the thing, here's one of the reasons I want to do this stuff is because we sit around after the meetings and we, we talk about how this is the greatest stuff since sliced bread. We don't talk about, oh man, I'm glad I'm not using, but I still kind of suck. Like we're not sitting around doing that stuff. We're not saying, oh, well, at least I don't use. We're saying this thing is, this is the instruction manual for how to deal with life and life's terms. This thing makes me better. It makes me better than the person next to me that doesn't have addiction. Like that's what this does. Like not to try to, and not actually, I'm not trying to be like arrogant, but but it, it does. And so to be able to have that come through, take that energy and the meeting after the meeting, and, and you don't have to necessarily do it as crazy. I'm saying it right now, but like, be like, dude, this is an asset for me and it can be an asset for you. And this is what makes me different. And so you got five people that all went to college that all say all the right things in the job interview that when they ask what's your greatest weakness, they're going to do the thing. Like I said, in my Ted talk, where they're going to be like, Oh, I work too hard or I'm too perfect at my job. And you go, you know what? I'm a recovering addict. Two years ago, I got into DU, my last DUI. I entered recovery. I did all the hard work to recover. I have 21 months now. I'm actively engaged. I volunteer. And in the process, I've taken everything that I've learned and I'm pulling myself up as a professional. And now I'm sitting in front of you today as a completely different human that knows what it's like to be at the bottom. And I know what it's like to pull myself up and grow. And I imagine considering the line of work that you would be interviewing me for, the ability to relate to the employees and understand that they all have their own struggles and how to respond to them would be an incredible asset to you like this is an opportunity for you to differentiate yourself if you lean into it if you truly believe that it's this great thing which i know that you do and and you know what uh so like check it out dude so this is going to come out may 5th read the title it's the first time your your desire to create a 12-step fellowship for everybody else so I read in Brene Brown's The Gifts of Imperfection. She's a huge inspiration to me. She said she went to 12-step meetings. It didn't really take for her. And she wished that there was a 12-step fellowship for everybody else. And so I'm not just coming out with a book. I'm coming out with an entire program for everybody else so they can live without a mask. And one of the reasons that I'm so bullish on this is because I've done the research to understand what is changing in business because of my background in corporate and as an entrepreneur and all that kind of stuff. And so there's two things that have dramatically changed that change how we perceive that change what effective leadership will be. Number one, we've gone from hyper-connected locally to hyper-connected globally through technology. And what that has done is, is that has taken all of our connections and spread them really thin, which means we don't have intimate relationships anymore, or we have a lot less of them. And so we're connected to everybody and kind of nobody. At the same time, we have transitioned from a manufacturing economy to a services economy. 
in a manufacturing economy as an employee, you are just a, a peg and you're, you're, just, you're just on the assembly line. You're, you're creating a product that goes on a shelf and you don't get to interact with the actual person that buys the product. In a services economy, you're responsible for, for solving problems for humans. And that requires human connectivity. And so in the last 25 years, these two have, co have converged. And as a result, at a time where we have less connectivity than we've ever had, connectivity has become 10 times more important for us to be successful in business and especially in services business, whether you have internal customers or external customers. And the way that we connect is not in our strength and wearing masks, it's in our humanity. And it's in how we lead ourselves. And so without people knowing it or saying it or realizing it or anything like that, people are searching for human beings that will be authentic with them and will connect and have a willingness to own their story and own their, um, their misgivings and their weaknesses and all that kind of stuff. And that creates trust. And so I think...